And I opted for a completely acoustic album. That was my vision before we started working on Revelation. And, um, and then we ended up with having like a 50-50 album with half the material acoustic, half the material electric. Uh, so so I'm, I'm quite happy with the acoustic songs. Although if I have to pick one song, I think I would say uh, Dusty Roads, which is mainly an electric song with, with some acoustic elements. I met Luve uh, at a friend's uh, party and oh, you, oh, you play drums, yeah, I play bass. Okay, so, so do you want to meet and jam? And she said, sure. And, you know, the type of conversation that happens in a party, you know, usually doesn't lead anywhere, but this time it did. We got in contact like just a few days later and, and we, we had this jam session set up. And I, I also wanted to start the band that, that you never, uh, that didn't exist or that you never, your, your favorite band, the band you wanted to see live but couldn't find or couldn't find anymore. We started uh, pondering our influences and, uh, and sounds and uh, in the beginning, I, 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 I'm glad that you can't hear how it sounded, but um, after a while, we kind of got the hang of it, I think. Uh, I think Sienerut is um, experimental in, a, in an interesting way. I think we've always gone our own way. We've not been so much into like following trends or fads. And, and, and also we have not uh, been afraid of going the long way. Like, okay, let, we're gonna do it this way. It's gonna be hard, it's gonna be long, it's gonna be tough, but that's how we're gonna do it. It's kind of interesting, I can tell. Um, a lot of the CN Root sound is based on analog recording, like strictly pure analog with recording on tape, mixing on tape, cutting vinyl straight from tape. And that started with a very interesting uh, thing in my mind because I think I think we all wanted to go there but I think I might have been like the prime mover for that direction and it was when we did our first recording before you know the band that Luven and I had uh, we went to this modern studio they had digital equipment and digital from the 90s so you can imagine the digital sound from the mid 90s sound like shit but anyway this was modern and like our friends who, who did demos, they got a cassette, but we came off the studio with a CD in our hands and was like, well, we have a CD. When I started comparing this CD with, with my old Black Sabbath records or whatever records I had in my collection, I was like, this doesn't sound like, this doesn't sound like a record, <laughs> this sounds like shit. And my idea was like, wait a minute, all these old records, they sound great because they were recorded in another way. And this sounds like shit because of this modern uh, digital device that they used in this studio. So then I started like, first, very easy, just like, okay, before they recorded on tape, so we have to record on tape. So we, done, we did our next, next recording on tape. And it sounded better, but it still wasn't there. And then I was like, but when they recorded on tape, how did they mix it? And he mixed it on tape also. Okay, so we have to do that as well. And then that was like, sort of evolved into like a, a complete uh, recording historical journey. So how uh, I wanted to know everything uh, about how records were being made in the past. So I got very interested in that. And, and we involved that process in, in Sienna Roots recording, all the way from recording to mixing to cutting. Producing an album is all the way from like having a good vibe and having a nice surrounding with good coffee and uh, making the artist comfortable. I mean, the whole psychological aspect to recording, that's producing. Producing is also very technical, like microphone preamps, mic placements, and then mixing and cutting and controlling the whole chain. Uh, but then combined, producing is also like diving into the songwriting and telling the artist change this part, uh, remove this chorus, make this jam shorter or longer or whatever. Um, so producing is a lot of things and, and I, uh, I would think that I, I'm involved in, in parts of it. That I, I'm, I'm very I'm heavily involved in parts of it, but I think uh, uh, from a bigger perspective, the whole band is involved in the production process. 
I have a small one and it goes live also. I don't know if my band members even know, but uh, I don't want to sound flash or anything, but I have a couple of Rickenbackers and, and, and I have uh, my blue one that I have um, uh, used a lot in the past. And that one has to come out of the case first. If I open the case and it's the wrong Rick, I close it again and I open the other one. Uh, this this bass guitar uh, can be heard on um, all our all our records. I I bought it on pure looks. I thought it was a beautiful instrument, and uh, I figured a beautiful instrument ha probably has a beautiful sound, uh, and it proved to be true. Because then um, after this one, I have tried many many basses exactly uh, like this one, uh, but nobody. Um, is quite as good as this one. It's it's solid and smooth at the same time. It's pretty obvious. I like old tube amps. Uh, my preferred one for recording is an old Sun uh, from '69. Uh, that one is also featured on all our records. I want Gear to have a history, to, to have something to bring uh, to the mix, not just like okay, I go to a store and I grab. A new piece of equipment and yeah it may sound sound good but it's it's got no soul so we have a new album coming out it's called revelation it's released this uh, spring early spring late winter on atomic fire records so if you want to support the band or just have some great music make sure to get it mm -hmm. 